Hi, welcome to my latest video. Today I'm going to do a very quick video looking at all of the different fluids that are required by the Freelander 2. We've got brake fluid, we've got antifreeze and then various oils here. Oh, not that one, that's something else. And one by one I'm going to go through these and talk about each one and where it goes on the car and how much you need to use. It is absolutely bitterly cold at the moment. The UK is going through a bit of a cold spell and it's currently minus three. Pit lane Kitty's still out here and she's very, very cold. So I will try to keep this very quick. So in order of the front of the car to the back, very roughly, we have up the front here, We've got screen wash, okay? Now, screen wash, I don't have the bottle of screen wash here. We all know what a bottle of screen wash looks like. I've got the flippy funnel filler cap here. This is a Skoda filler cap. I've done a video on this. I occasionally buy a job lot of these in from Skoda in Europe and resell them on my website. I'm out of stock at the moment, but I'll hopefully get another load of them in again soon really useful means that you don't spill washer fluid everywhere when you're trying to fill up the washers underneath here is the coolant bottle okay so the coolant you need is this stuff here it's OAT organic acid technology I think that stands for it, it's still an ethylene glycol based antifreeze but it's kind of pink in color rather than the sort of bluey green stuff and I don't think you can mix the two okay so you've got to make sure you buy the right one this is the one that you need it's sort of ready mixed ready to pour in um, yeah oh organic additive technology it says there not organic acid I don't know where I've got acid from organic additive technology okay so that's I think the the organic additive thing is um, the thing that stops corrosion um, I'm not sure but uh, but that's the one you need okay and it goes in here okay um, don't fill it right up to the top there is a marker on the side of the uh, coolant header bottle here which uh, has a sort of a hot and a cold marking do not whatever you do open the lid of the uh, the bottle when it's hot did that once on a classic mini years ago and severely burnt my arm it wasn't pleasant so um, wait until the cars cooled down and then fill the coolant to the cold marker on the side of the bottle and then when it heats up and expands slightly it should rise up to the hot marker over here we've got brake fluid okay so the specification is dot four uh, I think DOT's Department of Transport, it's sort of a standard for brake fluid. DOT 4, you, you can go up, don't go down to DOT 3. Um, this is DOT 5.1, it, it's absolutely fine. I think 5.0 is non-synthetic, 5.1 is synthetic. You can't mix the two, okay, so pick one and stick with it. I use DOT 5.1, and that goes in over here. Let's just see if I can quickly reach in and open that. And again, there is a little sort of max marker there. You don't want to be going over that max marker. Um, the fluid doesn't expand that much, but of course, when you go and fit new brake pads and you push those pistons back in, uh, you're going to end up overflowing. You might have to siphon some or syringe some back out of the uh, the reservoir. Okay, so uh, just watch the fluid levels of your brakes. Uh, likewise, as your brake pads wear. Um, the fluid level will drop okay so you'll need to top it up so quickly moving on round here power steering okay so power steering this is an interesting one the correct fluid that you need is this one which is the CHF central hydraulic fluid it isn't the normal sort of red colored power steering fluid okay so the 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 standard that you need to meet is CHF202 phone so CHF202 now this says on here CHF118 
Um, yeah, there it is in the middle there. It does say CHF202. Okay, so, um, so that is the one you need. And it's actually green in colour. Okay, so if you buy power steering fluid and it's red, you've got the wrong one. This one, this is from Halfords, a CHF202 standard and it's green. Okay, um, that goes in here. Okay, and I did a video on how to replace this reservoir here because it's got a filter inside it which blocks up and then your steering goes a bit a bit, um, bit noisy and a bit sort of lumpy. So uh, well worth changing that reservoir. It's fairly simple to do. I did a video showing how to do that. Um, the, 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 the trick is to connect the new reservoir to the input and the old reservoir to the output and then as you sort of crank the engine the fluid gets pumped round and you then empty out the old one and put new fluid into the new one and eventually when it's all new fluid you connect it up properly and away you go. Okay, so that's, that's an easy way to change the fluid. Engine oil now, okay, so uh, this is the engine oil that I buy. Uh, many brands are available. I like the Magnatec, okay, it's the 5W30 is the grade that you need and it's this A5, so so this 5W30, the W stands for winter, okay, so what that means is the the number is the viscosity, okay, which obviously changes with temperature, so the gradient of the viscosity is gradient 5 in winter when it's cold, and then when it's heated up it's gradient 30, okay, you're probably wondering, well, why is it not just one gradient, okay, well, good old-fashioned pure mineral oil would be a straight 30 or a straight 40 or something like that you can actually get a cl classic car old straight 30 oil but nowadays they put in all these newfangled curly molecules which unravel as the oil gets gets hot and and effectively thicken the oil okay so it sort of changes from one viscosity gradient to another okay all oil thins out when it gets hot but this sort of multi-grade kind of numbering system is is the, the cold viscosity and the hot viscosity okay so older vehicles tended to use 10w30 10w40 5w30 that's quite a thin oil that is we shake that that's quite quite a runny oil okay so modern engines have such tight tolerances they can use a, a much thinner oil okay they don't need that thick oil to kind of build up the oil pressure okay so that's the oil you need this does meet a sort of a some sort of Ford standard I can't see where it is there but there are oh, it's down here it's, it's it's all these kind of things look there you go Ford there's a Ford thing there um, these engines are uh, not quite for they're used by Ford they're, they're PSA engines used on Citroëns, Peugeots, Fords, all sorts of cars. So, um, so it's a Ford oil standard that uh, that is uh, designated by a Land Rover. But you you want the the five W thirty, and they're, they're, this this A five is a new kind of numbering scheme now. They have kind of like C three and A five, and it, it it's just another code for the uh, for the grade of the oil. Okay, so quickly moving on round now gearbox oil okay manual gearbox all right so automatic gearbox whole nother thing okay if you have an automatic gearbox there is a fluid available for it i don't know what it is look in the haynes manual i don't have an automatic gearbox so i've not worried about that but um what i do know is that to to get an automatic gearbox serviced it really needs a sort of a power flush okay so they they connect it up to some special equipment and it sort of pumps out the old oil and, and puts new oil in manual gearbox a lot simpler you can just drain it out and top it up okay so this one here um the filler is in the wheel arch, the UK passenger side wheel arch is sort of in there. I will show a screenshot now. The drain is underneath and what I would recommend there is um, making sure that you can access the filler and you can undo it before you drain out the old oil just in case you go and drain out the old oil and then find you can't fill it back up again. Okay, so I've done a video on that. 
that's the oil you need. It's the 75W90 synthetic um, MVMTF manual transmission fluid, okay? Um, just looking back at the engine oil, the engine oil filler is there, I'm sure you all know that, and the drain is on the sump underneath, okay? M10 copper washer on the drain plug. Okay, transfer box, okay? So transfer box, otherwise known as the front differential, that's behind the engine, down the back there. The front transfer box or front differential needs a special transfer fluid, okay? The standard for the transfer fluid is BOT118. Now, if I look at this, I'm going to put my little light on, actually. There we go, that's a bit better, it's getting dark now. Somewhere, when I'll put up a screenshot, somewhere it says BOT118. Okay, so this is Ravenol, other brands are available, there's a Castrol one. Uh, and you'll probably buy a sort of a Land Rover branded one as well. But this uh, Ravenol is good stuff, uh, available on Amazon, which is, is quite nice. And they also do the Haldex fluid. Okay, so the Haldex is the effectively the centre differential. It's the it's a coupling. It's an active coupling that engages the rear the rear wheels um, by a by a certain amount. It's got a sort of slipping clutch clutch plate pack inside it and um, all sorts of clever stuff goes on to sort of engage or disengage that clutch pack in a varying amount and that then transfers power to the rear wheels as required. Doesn't take regular gear oil, it needs special Haldex fluid, okay? So this is very kind of special expensive fluid. You can buy a a little tube of this stuff from Land Rover and it's about 25 pounds for like a, like a sort of like a sealant gun kind of tube full. I, I bought that once and then I found this nice litre pack of it. I don't know what's special about it, um, but it's special Haldex fluid. Okay, I don't know what the standard is for that Haldex fluid, but as long as it's got Haldex written on it, um, then it will be fine. Okay, gear oil, rear differential. Good old fashioned gear oil. Okay, so 80W90, good old thick, proper gear oil. Okay, so again, we've got the W thing, the same as this here and the same as this. So this is very, very thick oil, 80W90. So it's almost a single grade oil. I mean, it, it, um, changes its viscosity uh, setting sort of very very slightly as it warms up but not by much it's just, it's just always thick okay and that's what you want in the rear differential it's a shame in a way that the front differential doesn't use the same uh, same gear oil it, it doesn't for some reason who knows who knows why um, but that is what you need on the back so I did a video on the transfer fluid I've also done a video on the diff at the back I haven't done Haldex yet, and that is on my list of things to do. Okay, so I will do that very soon. The only two other fluids that I can think of that are used on the car is fuel, pretty obvious, okay, diesel or petrol, on my car it's diesel, and battery acid, okay. Now, these modern batteries, you don't have to do anything with them, they're maintenance free. This is an EFB, an enhanced flooded battery, but there isn't, uh, I'm just looking to see, no, there's no kind of like little caps that you can undo to sort of put in the deionized water like you used to have to do on old style lead acid batteries, okay? So the old sort of flooded um, lead acid batteries, just literally lead plates in a, in a sort of bath of sulfuric acid, uh, You, the acid would, slowly sort of evaporate and dry up and uh, the level would drop and you you would normally top that up with deionized water and that would sort of um, give the battery a bit of a new lease of life. Uh, these modern ones, the, the AGM, Advanced Glass Mat, I think that stands for, and the EFB, they're, they're sealed up. They're, there's no there's no, nothing that needs to be done with them. You, you don't um, pour anything in to top up anything, okay? So when that battery comes to the end of its life, it gets uh, taken to the um, taken to the sort of the recycling place and uh, and I buy a new one, okay? But in the meantime, there's nothing to do on it. Okay, so that is it.
that is it i can't think of any other fluids that need to be put in the car i know people talk about snake oil and blinker fluid but i've never found anywhere to uh, to put that into the engine so i can't think of anything else i've covered everything if i've forgotten something then please leave a comment and let me know and i'll do another video but uh, until next time from a bitterly cold UK I am going to go inside and warm up I hope that video was useful don't forget to like and subscribe I'll see you in the next video thank you bye